In this video, I want to demonstrate how we can use a new technique to solve a familiar problem. The problem is that a snowboarder begins at rest at the top of a slope 67.2 meters long at an angle of 23 degrees to the horizontal. We can consider the coefficient of friction between the board and the snow to be zero in this initial example. And the question is, what is her velocity at the bottom of the slope? We've already solved this problem earlier in the semester by using Newton's second law to find the acceleration of the snowboarder and then using that acceleration in the kinematics equations. But I want to demonstrate here how we can use energy methods to solve this problem. When we're using energy methods, the first step is, as is in so many other cases, to begin by drawing a diagram of the situation showing the object at key points in its motion. In this case, the object is the snowboarder. So we draw our incline here, 23 degrees, and we indicate the length of the incline. Sixty-seven point two meters. And then we draw our snowboarder at two key points along the track. At the top and at the bottom. That concludes step one. Step two when solving problems using energy methods is to decide where zero gravitational potential energy is. This is another one of the many arbitrary decisions we have to make as part of the problem solving process. That can be anywhere we wish it to be, we just have to choose where zero potential energy is and then stick with that. In general, a good strategy is to have zero potential energy be the lowest point that the object ever gets in its motion. That way, you don't have to worry about negative values for potential energy. So a good place for us to have zero potential energy is here at the bottom of the slope, where the height is zero. Step three is then to indicate on the diagram what the kinetic and potential energies are of the object at the key points. So here in our diagram, we would up here say that the potential energy at the top of the slope is mgh, where h is the height of the slope, the vertical height of the slope. And since we start from rest, the kinetic energy will be zero. Down here at the bottom of the slope, we've already established that the potential energy is zero, and then the kinetic energy will be one-half mv final squared. There's only two key points in the motion, and so step three is complete. Step four is then to use the principle of conservation of energy to discover what we need to find out. In this case, our formula for the conservation of energy is going to be initial potential energy plus initial kinetic energy plus the work done by non-conservative forces equals the final potential energy plus the final kinetic energy. In this example, it's very clear what our initial and final positions are, since we only have two positions on the incline. So we fill in here that the initial potential energy is mgh, that the initial kinetic energy is zero. We don't have any non-conservative forces acting on the snowboarder in this first example. The coefficient of friction is zero. So the only force acting on the snowboarder is gravity. That's a very conservative force. So the work done by non-conservative forces is zero. The final potential energy is zero, and the final kinetic energy is one-half mv final squared. So our conservation of energy formula has gotten really simple in a hurry. It's simply mgh equals one-half 
mv final squared. One thing we notice here immediately is that we do not need to know the mass of the snowboarder. The mass of the snowboarder was not given, and it turns out that we don't need it because it cancels out. We can then solve this equation for the final velocity, v final squared, would then equal 2gh. But now we have a problem where we need to know the height of the snowboarder. We need to know this value h before we can proceed. Well, we can determine the value of h by using trigonometry, by realizing that our slope here is a right triangle. And so we can use the trigonometric functions, specifically the sine function. We can say the sine of 23 degrees equals opposite over hypotenuse. In the case of this triangle, the side opposite the 23 degree angle is what we want, the vertical height of the slope. And the hypotenuse is what we're given, the length of the slope. This equation simplifies to tell us h is 67.2 times the sine of 23, which is going to be 26.26 .26 meters. This problem has three significant figures, but I'm keeping the extra significant figure here because this is an intermediate calculation. Well, now that we have the vertical height of the slope, we can plug in our numbers here. Say that v final squared equals 2 times 9.80 times 26.26. Right, and that is 514, meaning that our final velocity is going to be 22.69 meters per second which we would report as 22.7 meters per second due to significant figures. So our final answer is the final velocity of the skier at the bottom of the slope is 22.7 meters per second, which is exactly the result that we got in the previous example using Newton's second law and kinematics.